Hello, welcome to the video. A couple things to get out of the way if you would like to support this channel. Pardon some of the production quality of this and the fact that I'm about to present to you without looking at you. <laughs> There's some things I thought I should say before I actually start the voiceover portion where you won't be looking at me. Normally this would be behind the scenes, but today I didn't feel like memorizing this part of the script and so I'm not going to. <laughs> If you've been around the art block a few times by now, you've probably heard the quote, good artists copy, great artists steal. If I'm being completely frank, I frequently think about this quote, but I still do not know its full meaning. And honestly, I'm having a hard time even finding the fully undisputed attribution who originally spoke it. Though most frequently I do hear it attributed to the ultra famous Pablo Picasso. I don't know all of the origins or context, but I would like to do my best today to approach understanding of its meaning with you. The reason we're talking about this today is twofold. One, copying, plagiarism, originality, fair use, inspiration are all such hot topics in art. And two, in this video, I'm going to be making art inspired very directly by another artist, so it seems appropriate to discuss. I'm dead. <laughs> dead. Last night I watched Sleeping Beauty and it, gorgeous. The original Sleeping Beauty, everything is hand painted, so intricate, amazing. I was looking at it thinking, wow, this looks a lot like this artist that I've been liking lately. Come to find out, it's the guy who made the art for Sleeping Beauty. I like separately fell in love with his artwork and his artwork. So oh, much inspiration to draw from here. And I just, I'm really excited. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> but first, disclaimer time. One, please note, I do not claim to be an authority on anything I'm about to discuss, but I think it's worthy for a discussion, so please go easy on me. Two, with the limits of time on this video, I'm going to do my best to consolidate my thoughts, so know this will be a limited perspective into everything I feel about this subject. Three, I am not well versed on legal components of this topic, but from my understanding, limited, the law seems very much determined case by case with a certain level of subjectivity, so we should be nuanced in discussion of this. And four, I know this topic can elicit strong emotional reactions, but I think it's really important that we keep this a safe space where discussion and learning is prioritized. So please approach any comment section threads with respect for other people, myself included, wanting to learn and engage engage in thoughtful discussion. Throughout this voiceover, there will be a couple of interruptions for vlogs, so just be prepared for that. Okay. Time for voiceover. Okay, so I want to start by talking about my first impressions and assumptions about this quote's meaning and its personal applications, followed by some of your responses on my Twitter post asking for your interpretations. To me, this quote is acknowledging a very important point that we stress over as artists about originality. In discussion of rules with art regarding to inspiration, the quote begs acknowledgement of the fact that everything you do as an artist is built on the work and history of artists who have come before you. Art period after art period has evolved as a reaction to previous periods of art. We begin with prehistoric art that depicted lived experience and involved record keeping and storytelling, then move to greater efforts to show narrative and realism. Next, we move into a renaissance where we aim to incorporate more naturalistic qualities, softness in the body, body, weight distribution, contrapposto, and then to Impressionism, where we break down realism and try to capture essence and movement instead of extreme realism. Then, again, we rebel against realism altogether and try to capture what are the essential characteristics of art. How can I break down the established norm and still claim the title of art, which led to abstraction, minimalism, conceptualism, and even further now to new genre art forms like performance, video, installation, sound, digital media, and things I don't even know a name for. The next thing I believe the quote calls for is for you and I to be aware of your influences and the artist's backs you stand on, taking full ownership of how you were informed by these things without shame. To claim you were a complete original is to forget the community and work that has led to your ability to make the artistic choices you are making. It was people like Jackson Pollock who threw splattered paint onto a canvas and Marcel Duchamp who placed an upside down urinal in a gallery and called it art, who opened a million doors for you to make 
diverse work with conceptual and aesthetic liberty and still participate in the artistic community. Whether your influence is very direct or loosely connected, you are still part of a growing artistic history that has led you to arrive where you are now. For more personal application, this hopefully will address one perspective on towing the line between inspiration and plagiarism. For me, I highly value learning and teaching, so I see studying the work of other artists as a highly valuable resource. In my personal artwork and career, I have given consent and made accessible for others to study my pieces and personal reference photos. When I do this, it is in the hope that it can help others in their creative paths and be used as a launching point, learning tool, or motivator for idea generation. In that experience, sometimes I see direct copies of my work, sometimes copied components and reinventions of my work, and other times entirely new pieces, but with clear stylistic influence from the work. I did just eat those off the floor. <laughs> I think I need to go further on this one. It's the first one I did. I think it needs more stages. I think this needs to just be the background. If I'm really trying to capture some of the essence and qualities of this artist. I tried to make some more bold decisions and be a little more risk taking in this. And I feel like I can really see echoes to some of the illustrative work of different animations in this more so than other works of mine. I want to figure out what it is, how to capture some of his elements, what he thinks about and does. And then I also want to think how I, I want to mold that and what I actually want to take from that incorporate it on my own. Part of me feels torn like I should go f more fully towards his style to really just get a better grasp of it. The other part of me feels interested in already just trying to combine the two, which I guess in some senses I have done with this. And um, I guess we'll just see where the wind takes us. So top of the morning to you. <laughs> Because I see part of my role in line as a teacher, I am probably especially open to this practice, but the times I feel best about opening up my work as a tool for others is when I see them attributing and disclosing my work as an influence, especially when they are very directly making studies of my specific pieces. For completely valid reasons, not everyone wants others to use their work as a jumping off point or for others to copy their pieces. People work hard for their artistic identity. It's built on years, stress, research, and when someone else comes and completely steals ideas without giving any reverence to their influence, that sucks. And also steps into questions of ethicality, copyright, and legality. Here's the thing. The reason I do value studying others as a learning resource is because the times I I have grown most as an artist or when I have found an artist who I fall in love with and make a very direct effort to learn from them, as I'm doing with this video time lapse. Often what that looks like for me in its beginning stages is taking very direct influence from them conceptually and aesthetically so that I can get to a point where I can internalize and then evolve those ideas into more personalized approaches with an acknowledged understanding of how the artists have informed me. It's a conscious collection and curation of ideas and imagery that are inspiring and compelling to me. And in that way, I suppose I am stealing. But if that is stealing, the hope is to steal ideas without stealing claim to someone else's artistic identity, wrongfully claiming ownership or masking your influences. There is definite room for debate on all sides of what I'm saying, but I do think in one way or another, we all share and get inspiration from other artists, and it's good to acknowledge some of the ways in which we do this and the intentions behind how we go about it. So I've made four paintings now. Except the first one is so stylistically different. I feel like I started understanding a little better how to echo his style uh, and kind of reinterpret it in my own way. It's very different from anything I've ever made and I, I really like it. It's been a good learning experience. So now I'm going to go back to the first one where I was the most uh, lost and unsure how to do it and try to bring in elements to make it more illustrative and more similar to those three ones that I just worked on. So let's do it. <laughs> let's hear some other voices that aren't mine. For the sake of time, I'm going to read them and then whatever we have to discuss further, I would love to see some very open-minded, thoughtful discussion in the comments section. Let me recap what that quote was and then we're gonna go through the responses. Our quote was, 
Good artist copy, great artists steal. Our first response is from at Captain Starley on Twitter, quote, good artists can learn to make pieces that closely resemble other people's work. Great artists see the individual parts in each style, take bits they like, and combine that with other bits to make something new. At Gloppydo said that you shouldn't try so hard in life to be original and everything is inspired from somewhere or something. At Juju Pavas, when you copy something, you try your best to do the exact same thing as someone else did. But when you steal one's idea or piece, it is yours. You're free to do whatever you like with it and that's how I see it. You add your personal touches and signature when you steal. You can't do such if you're copying. At JPG0809, Good artists copy style, and real artists steal ideas and execute them in a different way. At Dr. Monstro said, It means you may not be the first to try something, but you did it so well that everyone thinks of you when they see that style. Like Picasso, Lichtenstein, Monet, Van Gogh, they all took a pre-existing art style to the next level. That's interesting. That's a different approach to that than I had. At Afshan CK Arts, When you keep your eyes, ears, and heart open, you let yourself be inspired and molded by circumstances, experiences, and people around you. You get the opportunity to listen to a lot of ideas, and if you were inquisitive and proactive enough, you will want to develop that idea and actualize it. A lot of the responses I got were very similar to some of the things that I talked about in this voiceover. For one counterposition offered, we have at Blondie Pants, who explained her feeling that, quote, an artist that steals has no integrity and has no respect for intellectual property. They see art as a superficial thing. The artist who copies tries to understand how something was made. They respect every brushstroke and their goal is to integrate another style into their own. This actually seems very similar to some of the other points made. It's just in the semantics of the words copy and steal. So thank you all so much to everyone who contributed your ideas for this video and all of you who are watching, sending you so much love. Woo! That was great. <laughs> I hope. It's good things to talk about. <laughs> Make sure you guys are subscribed and following on my social media accounts so you can be involved when I do different things like these calls to action. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye!